In this video, we're going to talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are these strange sounding objects that are of fundamental importance in the theory of linear algebra. So I want to sketch what we're trying to accomplish geometrically first. Let's begin with a specific example. I want to begin with the matrix A, and the matrix is going to have two different columns. First of all, it's going to have the column 3, 1, and second of all, it's going to have the column 0, 2. Now, let's try to understand what this transformation does geometrically. First, I'm going to note that the domain and the codomain, that they're both R2 here. So when I sketch this, I'm going to sort of sketch them on top of themselves, as in, I'm going to put up my traditional axes, but these are going to represent both the domain and the codomain at the same time. I'll show you what I mean by this. So what we want to do is take some vectors in the domain and see where they end up going. So how about, let's take the vector, the standard one, the E1. This is the vector 1, 0. And what happens to E1? Well, I look at the first column of the matrix A if I was to multiply the vector 1, 0 by this matrix A, it would go over to 3, 1. So there is 2, there is 3, it would go over to some vector like this. And that would be my matrix A applied to the E1. So you'll notice that I, I wrote the vector in the domain, the E1, and the vector in the codomain, the AE1, and I, I drew them sort of on top of themselves on the same picture because they're both R2. Let's do the same thing to the E2 vector. So if I come here, there's my E2 vector, then to look at what this does, multiplying the vector 0, 1 by that matrix, well, I just look at the second column, and this looks like it's going to go over here. This is going to be the matrix A applied to E2 right there. Now, there's a bit of an asymmetry here that I want to point out to you. Notice that if I'm the E1, or if I'm some multiple of the E1, so this is the entire line, the entire x-axis, when the transformations hit that, it turns to some other vector, this vector 3, 1. And then multiples of the E1 turn into multiples of the 3, 1. However, if I look at the E2, so the E2 is sitting straight up, or a multiple of the E2, what happens to it? It turns into another multiple of the E2. As in, a vector whose line on the y-axis, some multiple of the E2, just becomes some other multiple of the E2. Indeed, it appears that what's really going on here between the E2 and the AE2 is a multiplication by a factor of 2. Indeed, if I thought about what the matrix A did to, I don't know, how about 7E2, because it's a linear transformation, it would just go to seven times whatever the matrix does to E2. But then since the A just takes that E2 and multiplies it by 2, it's just a stretching, then what this really is is just 14 times the E2. So in other words, this matrix A is just taking any scalar multiple of the E2 to some other scalar multiple of E2. It's a multiplication by 2, at least if I'm along the y-axis. So then I'm left to wonder, are there any other vectors that have this property? The property that multiplying by the matrix is just only a stretching factor. It doesn't have any rotations or inversions or projections or shears or any of those other properties. Is there some other vector where the matrix only stretches it? Now, you can maybe look by inspection and try to figure out whether you can just see another example, but I'll give you one explicitly. Let me take this matrix, this 3, 1, 0, 2, and I'm going to multiply it to the vector 1, 1, because I've already played around and I know that this vector is going to have this nice property. Well, we can multiply this out and this is going to go to the vector 3, 3. And then 3, 3 is just kind of the same thing as a multiplication by 3, the scalar 3 to that 1, 1. In other words, what's happening here is that this vector 1, 1 is going to itself, but with a stretching factor of 3. And if I want to try to plot that on, okay, so here is the vector 1, 1, and then it goes under this particular transformation to a of 1, 1, which just looks like 3 of 1, 1. And then, of course, 
because these transformations are linear, the same is going to be true of any other vector. If I, say, take this vector here, then it would transform out to three times that vector. If I take just a really little short one, it would stretch out, and so on and so on. It's going to take any vector along that line, any scalar multiple of the 1, 1, and every time it multiplies it out by 3. Now, here's the main point. We are going to really like when a matrix operates in this simple manner, that multiplying by this whole big convoluted matrix with all these different components turns out is just the exact same thing as multiplying by 2 or multiplying by 3. Or at least it turns out to be really nice for specific lines, like the line through 1, 1 was this multiplication by 3 as we've seen. And the line through 0, 1 was a multiplication by 2 as we've seen. But it doesn't behave nicely for all vectors. It doesn't behave nicely for all lines. For the 1, 0 and all the scalar multiples of that, it didn't just stretch it. It had some combination of stretching and rotating. So our task is this, to figure out what lines are really nice ones? What ones have the property that this whole convoluted matrix is just the simple operation of a stretching? And in particular, along those lines where it's just a stretching, what is that stretching factor going to be? This is the idea of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. All right, so let's try to take everything that we've just written geometrically and give an algebraic prescription of it. That is, what we're in truth looking for is a situation where when I have this matrix A and I multiply it to a vector X, that, that what it does is not something weird, but something simple. It's just only a stretching. As in, it stretches by some factor. Let's give a name to that stretching factor. Let's call it lambda times X. This is the so-called eigenvalue eigenvector formula. And what do those terms mean? Well, there's special names for the different components of it. This stretching factor here, this lambda, which takes the x and multiplies it by 2 or 3 or some value lambda, is referred to as an eigenvalue. So the eigenvalue you think of as this stretching factor. Meanwhile, the two different places where an x occurs, there and there, this is referred to as corresponding eigenvector. So notice that in this equation we have, this eigenvalue eigenvector equation, that there's a pairing of them. Eigenvalues are associated with particular eigenvectors. And the story is, for an eigenvector, the matrix is simple and it just stretches it by the value of the eigenvalue. Note, by the way, that associated to any eigenvalue, there's actually infinitely many corresponding eigenvectors. Indeed, Instead of, say, x, I could put, how about c times x, and I could replace both of those by c times x, and the formula would still be true. So in other words, cx is going to be an eigenvector for the same lambda that x was. By the way, this equation is sort of true. It, it's for sure the case that a times 0 is equal to lambda times 0, but this is true for every value of lambda, and it doesn't tell us anything interesting. This is just saying the vector that stays at the origin, well, it doesn't matter what a does multiplying to it, of course, it always stays at the origin. Nothing actually happens. Which is another way of thinking that the vector x, when you multiply by a, it stretches by any number you wish. It's the zero vector. So it's sort of silly to think of the zero vector as an eigenvector. So we're going to exclude this possibility from our notion of eigenvectors. Eigenvectors are always non-zero.